first thing I notice is look at this <laughs> look at this engine. <laughs> so uh apparently you can attach engines from the front now. That's funny. All right, that's it for this. So, let me grab you guys here. Okay, so I needed to buy a new engine stand because the engine stand that I have way back here is only rated for 1,000 pounds and a bunch of people told me it's pretty sketchy to put on there. So, I just went ahead and ordered a 1,500 pound one and excuse the chonklas, but this also folds up so I can actually uh, stow it out of the way, whereas my original one over there does not. So that one is going to a friend of mine, and then this one is just going to be my new engine stand. But, of course, what I got to do now, I got to separate this behemoth, uh, and I'm just going to set you guys up and you can watch me do that. I think I still need to get bell housing bolts, so I want to see if I have four of them to put it on the stand itself. Otherwise, I'm going to wait to separate it, and I got to run to like Ace or something like that. But let's get this apart. So a lot of these small things went uh, very slow because I'm trying to be very methodical and careful not to break any more connectors. Uh, these connectors are very brittle. Um, all these vacuum lines are brittle. Pretty much everything on this uh, that is plastic or rubber is brittle. So I'm taking my time. Um, and here we have me taking out the uh, torque converter bolts that hold the torque converter to the flex plate or flywheel, whatever you want to call it. I've got a little bit of a close up for you for that as well. Nothing like rocket science here. Just make sure you get all these bolts out so you can actually free them from the transmission itself and then we need to work on the bell housing bolts uh, so these actually weren't too bad and they weren't too tight uh, they were pretty easy to get off and now we just have to make some room for the engine hoist and get all this stuff off so we can finally lift it off of the tire and into the air that uh it's not looking great i'm gonna try a hammer and impact 13 on here and see if I can get away with this. It actually broke one of my chrome sockets, guys. First time ever. Okay, so I'm trying a six point right now. I think I'm just gonna skip that and go straight to my old reliable, my makeshift extraction set and then I'm going to try to impact it out all right so I'm not going to mess around I'm going to put that half inch impact on this socket and try to zip her out typically typically I do this by hand but with this engine spinning and kind of just floating here it's not the easiest thing in the world to do We got it, guys. We got it. So, new flywheel bolts need to be ordered. So, turns out, I thought this rear mainsail was leaking. It's the back of the oil pan. Someone, whoever rebuilt this last was not very good at it, let me tell you. Um, hopefully, I don't have to add any spacers to these. I don't know, though. So we will see. So I know I'm gonna have to take the oil pan off. So I'm kind of planning accordingly for that. Might need to add a spacer on these. I think I got them a little bit too long. Oh yeah. Essentially, I'm gonna attempt to support this by just the upper half of the engine because I know I'm gonna have to get this mount off at some point. So I'm going to try the, I don't know if I can, I might have to nut and bolt one side, but that's fine. Okay. 
This is always like a tricky part, guys. Every time. The bolts I got are a little bit too long. All right, so I'm just making myself two spacers. I need some vice grips. If I would have bought the right size bolts, I wouldn't have to do this, but here we are. Perfect. All right, so I'm at least gonna get two spacers out of this, maybe three. All right, guys, I found, a, found the right bolt. Found a bolt. It is definitely not ideal. It's a tiny, like, 10 mil bolt, but I've got three other good bolts here that I'm gonna get pretty tight. And you know what they say, guys, three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> Tighten this so it don't move around everywhere. I'm gonna need another 19, of course. This is gonna be heavily edited because there's just a lot of stuff that I have to do. Oh, some grace, if you will. Typically, I like to work from the front end. Just push her on over. Back this guy up a little bit. I'm kind of in my own way here. I've got like all my tools out in front of me. Just taking up space. Just gotta be careful manipulating this. You don't wanna put any like, you don't wanna get any crazy movements. Because you know, while I do trust this engine stand, I don't trust it that much. <laughs> Not engine stand, sorry, the uh, engine hoist. I actually do trust this engine stand pretty much because it's new. This is always the point of contention for me, is that nobody ever makes the engine stands the right width to place this into or an engine hoist to make this the right width to place into here. So I got something really sketchy going on here. As usual, as per usual, this is about as good as I could get it. Everything's kind of locked in right now. Now, what I'm gonna have to do, now this is loose, I'm pretty much just gonna have to lift this hoist leg like that and hopefully slide this guy out of here. So again, you know, I don't claim to be the smartest person ever, but I mean, to me, that seemed like the only way to do it. I'm gonna see if I can slide this guy out. We are completely uh, off of this hoist, so this guy can go away, I think. There we go, guys. My thinking cap was on today. This engine stand is pretty damn robust, guys. I'm a, I'm a fan. It doesn't like, look super sketchy. I got this engine stand from Amazon. It's called Big Red. Big Red, Torn Big Red Jacks. Actually made in Canada, it looks like. The, the factory is in Canada anyway. 1,500 pounds. Uh, I think this was maybe just over 200 bucks. I think actually it was under. I think it was like 170, 180. Um, super solid. For, for it to handle this 80 series engine that's like 600 pounds, like nothing. Granted, my 1,000 pound probably could do it, but with it being an inline six, obviously with it, with the weight spread out all the way to the front, it's gonna leverage that engine stand a little bit more. But this thing, solid. Solid as a rock. I can move it around. It's got wheels in three different places, which is nice as you can see. So this is not a plug. I'm not sponsored by them. They didn't send me this. I bought it with my own money. Um, dude, 10 out of 10. Uh, if it changes, I'll, I'll let you know in future episodes, but right now this thing is, is solid, dude. All right, guys, now that we got the engine split, uh, it's time to tear this thing apart and basically figure out what the hell is going on. So tomorrow I've got a friend of mine's son coming to 
basically clean all this stuff up for me. So he's going to degrease the engine, the transmission, the engine bay of the 80 series, and then we can get to the disassembly part sometime during the week. But that's going to be it for right now. I decided to uh, spare my detail guys some pain from cleaning up this engine. This thing was incredibly dirty. There was sludge everywhere on this side. So this side took me the longest side. Um, I actually had to dig out a lot of the sludge with my screwdriver and just continue to degrease and brush and degrease and brush uh, continuously until this engine somewhat resembles an engine. So all of that aluminum that you see at the pan right there was completely black. Like you couldn't even tell that was aluminum. It looked like uh, basically iron. It looked like the same uh, type of material that the block was made out of. So this thing was completely nasty, uh, but I did get it relatively clean. I'm gonna clean as I go and get these uh, parts off of the engine because it's gonna be a little bit easier to clean them when they're off. We're going to start a little bit more disassembly on this side with uh, some of the EGR pipes and the coolant lines along with a the thermostat housing and of course I'm going to try to uh, get this oil pressure sensor off but uh, it doesn't seem to want to come off for me so I'm just going to leave it on there so I don't break it and essentially I'm going to remove the oil cooler all as one piece but in order to do that I got to remove a lot of the coolant components uh, that are kind of in a way that that little uh, elbow you see there for the thermostat housing that is going to come off so I can uh, actually remove this cooler in one entire piece right here. So a lot of nastiness in here because obviously we had coolant oil mixture so um, it's nice to get all of this apart. All of this is going to be cleaned and I'm very excited for that portion of it. Now we're going to start with disassembling the top half, so I'm going to get all the PCV lines off of here, um, as well as the intake manifold, all of these bolts for the intake manifold, all of the uh, sensor connectors behind here. So there's a lot connected to this entire manifold. Uh, so it took me a little bit to actually find everything that was connected to it, and then of course remove everything. Uh, but eventually we do get this off of here. Um, I'm not going to disassemble this uh, intake manifold just yet. I'm going to wait until uh, basically everything's ready to go back together and then I'm going to separate all the components of the intake manifold. So I'm going to take off the injectors and reseal them and reseal the upper and lower gaskets and pretty much anything that is related to this uh, is going to be taken care of at a later time that I'll show you guys 100% all the way through. So just to note so none of you guys uh, yell at me for not taking that all the way apart. And of course, we're going to free all the spark plug wires and get out all the uh, coil packs and everything else out of here. So here I'm just taking apart that uh, upper radiator hose pipe, uh, as well as the power steering pump and all of the brackets for the alternator and all the brackets over on that side. So the power steering pump wanted to fight me a little bit, uh, but I wanted to get that out of there so I can check to see if it needs to be rebuilt. Um, I think it's a remanufactured one. Uh, I remember there being a remanufa remanufactured sticker on it at some point in time. However, uh, I still want to make sure it's good before I spend the effort to uh, put it back together there. I know that O-ring was leaking, which was like a majority of our oil, and that's where it came from on that side. Uh, and then we're going to go to the other side and remove the AC bracket because we got to get this timing cover off um, so we can get the timing components sorted out. But first, before we do that, we're going to go with the spark plugs. So these are relatively new. I just wanted to show them to you guys. Uh, they probably, I mean, y'all saw my other video of me replacing all of this stuff. Uh, so they're, they're relatively new. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to reuse them. Probably not on a fresh engine build. Here's some nastiness from the oil filter where everything was mixed. And I'm just getting all the accessories from the head off because it's going to get sent to the machine shop here in a bit. And as I take this valve cover off, if, I, if you guys could just do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you aren't. And I'm going to let past me explain my way through the rest of this head teardown. So uh, stay tuned for that. All 
Oh, that's the tensioner. That's what this cover is for. I've got a new one of those as well. Well, first, oh, that tensioner is not doing anything, guys. Okay, so I understand that it takes oil pressure to tension this tensioner, right? Let me, uh, give me a second. I'll try my best to do this with one hand, but uh, this, this engine might have been on borrowed time already. Now I know this takes oil pressure to uh, actually fill up and provide tension, right? But even still, typically hydraulic tensioners like this, they have some type of spring that's a lot, like I shouldn't be able to move this with my finger. Uh, I don't think, I don't know. Uh, maybe one of you 80 series gurus will know better than myself. But to me, that don't seem right. So now what I need to do, I'm gonna put this in top dead center. I'm gonna get these cams ready. Uh, I need to look at the FSM to make sure which two of the timing marks. I can't remember if it's the double dots or the single dots that get put together and then a bolt goes through the service position. Um, but I should probably take that tensioner off. Well, no, I'll wait. I'll wait to rotate it. So this is 180 in the wrong position. Let's put it in the right position. Which means you gotta spin this another time. So you've got that mark on the pulley, that shadow, lined up exactly at zero. And then back here, you've got these two dot dots on the camshaft. I'm not sure if you guys can see all that well. I'm trying to get the camera in here. Uh, I can show you when the cams are out. There we go. You can see there's two indents on the camshafts. Camshaft gears. There you go. Those two indents need to be lined up with each other. So those teeth that they represent and the receiving socket, I guess, needs to be together. So this is the cover for the timing chain tensioner. Just two 12 mil bolts. That's a good seal. All right, so this, this is what I mean, guys. Like, I know, like I said, this uses oil pressure, but I feel like the spring should be much stronger than that. I don't know, tell me, tell me in the comments if you think it's that's normal or not. I've got a new one. Either way, I'm just curious. So this is getting thrown out, no doubt. Now I believe we gotta remove this, this crankshaft bolt here. Let me reference the FSM. So they also, FSM also tells you to put some match marks here in the timing chain and the timing gear just so you can line the chain up how it was, but we've got a new timing chain. Um, maybe a new timing gear, because I got a whole timing kit. So I don't know if it comes with a gear or not, but we're gonna figure it out. So what I'm doing, let me explain this before I just go gung ho. I'm putting a wrench on the camshaft. There's a little slot. So let me show you. If you look here on the camshaft, you can see there's little it's basically hex drive, right? So I'm gonna be using this uh, adjustable wrench to hold the camshaft while I undo this 19 millimeter camshaft bolt. And uh, essentially you just wanna do that because obviously there's no tension in the timing chain anymore because we took the tension out. And you don't want to smack any valves together or anything crazy like that, so. There we go. Good old trusty snap-on ratchet. Guys, I've had this ratchet for years and it's undoubtedly my favorite ratchet. 
Nothing special about it. Just has some comfort grips. <clears throat> okay. I think that's all we're gonna get. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. Again, you just want it to be lined up enough to where if it's got a little bit of movement, it's not gonna bend your valves. Uh, and as long as the valves are in good condition, I plan on using them. Obviously, they're gonna get cleaned up by my local machine shop. The only person I trust, uh, Mike and Sons Machine Shop here in El Paso, Texas. Shout out to those guys. Um, always done good work for me um, and for everyone I know. I just like them, they're good dudes. I've known them for years, sent them business for years. And I think that's the way it should be. Well, again, I'm gonna be pretty gentle. I'm not like beating the crap out of this. Ah, I see, okay. So this drive gear for the, um, for the distributor, that's gonna come off first. So I'm just giving this a couple taps until she finds her way. There we go. I don't have a soft tip hammer. So if you do use, don't use, don't use this. Um, and if you're gonna do it, just real, real light taps. You don't wanna mar this surface uh, because this is what the distributor meshes with and it's gonna cause some problems. Same concept, super light taps. I'm actually tapping on the chain itself because I have another chain. All this timing stuff is gonna get replaced. I might even have another gear, but I don't remember. So I'm being gentle anyway. Just kinda walk it off. Tap it on each side. Am I being overly gentle? Maybe. But I'd rather be overly gentle than uh, basically act like, a, like an animal. So that's that. Uh, I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. Nor do I think I can take this out. I might be able to. So if for whatever your reason you're trying to do this in the car and you don't, want to take the engine apart, make sure that this chain stays where it's at. So honestly, I'd probably leave this gear in because um, you don't want this chain to drop down into the, uh, the timing cover because you're gonna have a bad day. You wanna have some kind of tension on this. So ideally you would keep this gear in this chain and maybe put a zip tie around the bottom, like around there, just to hold the tension and it'll stay here. But we're completely replacing this engine, so I don't really, I don't really mind. But it even freaks me out to not, like I can't do it, I can't do it guys. I gotta, I gotta leave it up top. Okay, so the exhaust camshaft is gonna go first. And essentially we need to thread uh, this little sub gear here. So again with camshafts, in general you should do this, but especially with inline sixes and very long camshafts like this. Let me get on camera for you guys. So you can see how, ser how super serious I am. Um, when you're removing camshafts that are this long, it's really important to take them off evenly. So the valve springs are still enacting on the lobes of the camshaft, right? So if you just zip all these off in a row, what's gonna happen is this camshaft's gonna start to tilt. So you have to pay attention to which um, lobes are being, or, or which valve springs are being pressed on by the camshafts and that's where you want to focus a lot of your your tension so right now for example i have the rearmost and the second to last or the second cam lobes being activated right now so if i were to take it off in this configuration which i'm not i'm going to put the bolt in the service port for the cam cam gear um i would loosen those two evenly so this whole thing comes off and as as like as straight as you possibly can. It's really important because you can break camshafts. Um, if those of you that have ever worked on BMWs before and have made that mistake, um, you know that those camshafts are really easy to break. So if we grab this thing and we start rotating it, you should be able to see a sub gear somewhere. Somewhere it lines up.
There it is. I see it. I see it. Let me loosen this a little bit. Okay. So let me show you what we're talking about. If you can see, I rotated this camshaft until you can see this hole right here that goes all the way through. This, this gear up here is kind of like split in half and that's how it controls the variable valve timing. So essentially what I'm gonna have to do is run a bolt through here. Um, I believe it's the same size as the cam cap bolts if I remember correctly. So if you wanna take that front cam cap off and use that, that's totally cool. Uh, I have a bunch of extra ones that I think are that size. Also, I think valve cover bolts are the same size as well. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. So you can use a valve cover bolt and there's not, I don't think there's a ton of load on these. Also, I'm not 100% sure if it'll go all the way through. Let me verify for you guys. Okay, yeah, so it'll go, it'll go past the, the threshold. So we're just gonna zip this bad boy. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use an impact because that makes me nervous, but yeah. So you can just use valve cover bolt. Whatever thread pitch the valve cover bolt is, that's what you can use for this. Um, also, I think the cam cap also works. I'm just gonna get it snug on there. I'm not going to get it super tight because I don't want to break that bolt, obviously. But that's it. That's all you got to do. Now, we just have to carefully work our way around um, removing this camshaft. I'm going to try to rotate this to where there's the least amount of inaction for the camshaft lobes. Ah, so there is an FSM. We're about there, but we're on the other side. So we're going to bring it back. We're going to take this intake gear. We're going to rotate until the two dot marks are at a 35 degree angle. So somewhere around here, which I mean, that looks relatively right. It's probably about a 45. So I think this is probably the best position to where the only two that are partially enacting are this guy and this guy. So let me show you what I mean. Basically, it says to have, remember how we saw the single dot mark? Well, there's also a double dot mark, like I was telling y'all. Um, let me see if I can get a good picture. So you can kind of see the double dot marks. There's one right there in the center of the light. There's one right there. So those need to be pointed at a 35 degree angle in the upward position. So basically exactly like they are, how they are now. It's probably closer to a 45, but it's close enough. And essentially what that does is that make sure the only two cam lobes that are enacting on the valve are that one and this one on the back side. And they're not even fully engaged. So that's what we're dealing with here. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly push this back without using excessive force. Uh, didn't feel like it moved to me, but that's fine. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off this initial uh, cam cap. And it's essentially, we're gonna repeat the process in a specific order for the rest of these as well. Just gonna loosen right there. Actually, I'm gonna switch to a, uh, a six point socket because these are a lot tighter than I had thought they were going to be. We loosened that one. Let's do the same for this guy right here. Again, don't rush this process, guys. Just take it really slow. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm just doing like a quarter turn every time until they're really loose. So we've got this first cam cap loosened. And typically I just like to hit these with, you know, maybe a hammer, something of that nature. We can also try to pry it, but typically, believe it or not, using a hammer is usually the better solution. And we'll just do this. There we go. Nothing crazy, barely even touched her. There we go. All right, first one's off. This is the easy one, guys. Looks pretty good. I'll show show you the cam caps after I get all this off and apart. Two, this is one, two, three, not four, five, not six, seven. Okay, that makes sense because both of these 
are pressing down on the valve spring still. So essentially we just want to skip this one and we want to skip this one back here. So we're skipping for right now number four and six. Same process. One, two, back of this one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just cracking it loose and then going to the other side and loosening this guy up. Okay, so it doesn't say to do this in the factory service manual, but I'm gonna go to the back and take number seven. Remember, we're skipping four and six. Back to this one, to this one, there we go. Now I'm gonna come back up to number three. Crack loose. There we go. A little bit at a time, guys. Nothing crazy. And then basically once they get like to the point where you can take them off by hand, that's when I'll just take them off by hand. We're skipping number four, going to number five. Crack loose. Basically make sure that this camshaft is coming up level. Um, it's really not that stressful. Like just, just be careful, take it slow, literally like a quarter turn at a time. So I'm gonna start with uh, number seven. I'm just gonna crack it loose. I'm gonna crack all four of them loose. Just like that. Do the same thing here. All right. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, number four. Okay. And now, how I like to do this is I like to do a quarter turn at a time. So, essentially I set my ratchet up and I just rotate it 90 degrees, or 45 degrees, I think I'm gonna do on both of these. And then I'm gonna go over here and do the same. Same methodology, just a quick 45 degrees, 45 degrees. And I'm gonna come back again, 45, 45. And we're just gonna do this back and forth, guys. Check to see that we're coming up level. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna go to a full quarter rotation now. You can kind of feel it in like the tightness of the bolts. Don't rely on it. Like if you gotta check with visuals, then do it. Uh, but there is a feel to it. You can feel a little bit of tension on the bolt as you go. So like four is pretty loose. So I might do maybe two on this guy. So actually it looks like this one is coming up more. So I'm gonna come back over here. So now we're looking pretty even. So I'm looking at the underneath the cam cap itself and that's how you can tell how much distance has traveled because those cam caps are gonna come straight up pretty much. Looking pretty even across the board. Yeah, I mean, they look pretty much the same. Not super scary, guys. You just have to pay attention to what you're doing. Just be careful, that's all I ask. I mean, or not, I mean, it's your stuff, right? Okay, these are the point where I can spin these by hand. So let's get these out of here. Can move these by hand now. All right, that's it guys. And we can just remove these because there's no pressure on these cams anymore. This one, looking pretty decent. Don't see anything super alarming right now. I am not an expert, I'll let the machine shop judge. That's all loose and good to go. And this one's got some pretty light scoring. Nothing fingernail deep but 
it's there. We're going to note it. Now, let's take this camshaft out and don't use any type of pry bar because it's just going to come right out. It's that easy. So here we are not breaking any camshafts. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to come, that's going to make it so the number four cylinder camshafts or number four cylinder valves are just starting to come onto the cam cap and the number one uh, valves are just starting to come off of the camshaft. That way it's, it's as least tension as, as possible and it's very difficult to move this slowly, but essentially that's what we're looking for. So that is like fully enacting and then we'll back it off to like right there. And that's pretty even. We're gonna do the same thing for these cam caps. All right, I have returned. It's quite some time later. Long story short, I had to go out and I had to get an external hard drive to store all of my stuff in. Back to where we were. We are currently removing the last two uh, cam caps. Well, first I was removing this, I think. And we're free and clear. So now, take these guys off. Another good looking cam cap. I'm getting lucky with these cam caps. Expected it to be worse, I don't know why. Judging just by the kind of discoloration and a lot of gunk caught in these heads. Another good cam cap. Let's get this head off. And this timing chain is going to fall, but it's okay. All right, guys. Sorry about this wire. Let's get this, uh, let's get this head removed. And the first thing we got to do is we got to remove these two front bolts that bolt to the timing cover. And then there's going to be a sequence and we need to take these off. Um, so you don't just like zip all these head bolts out all willy nilly, because if you do, uh, what can happen is you can warp the head uh, and cause yourself more problems. So essentially what you got to do, you just have to counterbalance all of these. So essentially the order is going to be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on and so forth. And you work your way into the middle doing opposing ends in a crisscross type pattern. Um, and you just want to start by breaking all of them loose. And then you can go as far as, uh, starting to, loosen them a little bit more, but you definitely want to break them all loose in that specific order. Otherwise you could warp your head, which obviously you don't want to cause uh, any more issues with that. But the first two that need to come out are these two front ones. I'm going to switch to mini berth over here. So these are pretty easy to come out. Nothing too wild. I've got new head bolts. Uh, I don't know if I have these two front timing cover bolts. I don't think so. So these are just going to go in my head box real quick. Like I said, we're going to do it in a specific order. We're basically going to do cross, cross, and then work our way in slowly. So these head bolts can be very tight. Just uh, be, be prepared to put some leverage on her. Let's see how much force this is going to require from us. Probably a good amount. 
Oh, not as bad. Not as bad as I thought. So that's one. We've broken loose. Same concept as the cams, guys. Just uh, go slow. Do like a half a turn each. <sighs> yeah. No, I've definitely had heads that were way, way, way tighter. These aren't too bad. BMW, for whatever reason, seems to have some insanely tight heads. And Land Rover. Okay, so now we're just working our way in. We went one, two, three, four. I believe we're starting here again. Good there, and then we just have the two in the middle. And we are loose all the way around. And for brevity's sake, I'm probably gonna grab my electric ratchet. <laughs> specific order once they're already broken loose I just do it because I don't know I just want to do it I think we can switch to something a little bit faster you guys believe it this is probably one of the first tools I've ever bought myself oh yeah these are soupy guys I don't know if these have washers on them very soupy and gross we won't be reusing these head studs that's for sure Oh, there's some, there's some like dirt in these bolts. That's interesting. Also, guys, I had no idea that OEM uh, head bolts were so expensive. So I ended up getting ARPs uh, since, spoiler alert, I want to turbocharge this engine. And I've worked with ARPs quite extensively in the past, and I think they're awesome. Uh, but they're also way cheaper than OEM head studs, which is just insane to me. I've never seen anything like that. I'll put these in our head box, but there's no way in hell we're reusing these. All right, so now I'm gonna try to free this head. Oh, oh wow, okay, well that came off really easy. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna transfer this over to the table. Actually, I'm gonna lay down some paper towels. Get this bad boy off. And there we go. Simple as that, as I break another Electrical connector. Alrighty, so alas, here it is. So you can definitely see that, I don't know man, something tells me that this head gasket was replaced before and potentially wasn't done. Either it's a really cheap head gasket or it wasn't done very well, which both are pretty possible. I'm trying to see which failed. Uh, kind of looks like a bunch of them failed, if I'm being honest. Primarily cylinder six. It's definitely cylinder six that was the failure point because that piston is very clean. But uh, we'll do some inspection on this block. Oh man, this is, we got some corrosion in the piston wall. I think it's just surface rust though. Yeah, okay. There's definitely some pitting in these cylinder walls. The cross hatching. Oh yeah, there's some, some wear here. She's had a hard life, folks. Let me grab you guys. So you can see what I'm looking at. Here's the failed cylinder. Let me get out of my own light. And you can tell it's a failed cylinder because look how clean this piston is comparative to all the other ones. So all the other pistons are really dirty, uh, which is normal, which is what you want, ideally. Uh, except this one was super clean. So I don't know if this was a cheap head gasket or potentially this I don't know. I don't know. This job was not done correctly, or maybe the head gasket was damaged when it went on. But I don't know if you guys can tell on video, but it looks like this cylinder for this, or this uh, gasket for this cylinder is like out of round. It's almost like they used an inappropriate size head gasket. It's very weird. But you can see how it kind of like overlaps into here. So I think the, the main failure point was right here um, because you can see some fried coolant right there and right here. 
So I think over here is where most of the, the coolant was leaking into the cylinder. But this edge is like not circular. It's like there's a flat edge right here and it kind of leaks over into the cylinder. Um, now this, I believe is, is uh, this might be an oil passage, but so typically these are your coolant passages and your smaller holes are the oil passages, right? So that's why I'm, I'm pretty confident and you can see a lot of this gasket material, maybe you can see is, is kind of like worn away. So I think in here, this is where it was leaking. So I'll flip the head over and we'll take a look at that in a second. But this is pretty obvious that cylinder six was causing our, our dismay, our woes, if you will. I was not running through the six with them. So I don't know. I'm not an expert on the one FE by any means, but to me, it looks like this head gasket was either a cheap head gasket or like I said, the job was was botched because that, does that look round to y'all? That doesn't look round to me. And last time I checked, cylinder bores are supposed to be round. And this one is the worst one. This one looks terrible and that's the one we had a failure on. So like I said, I'm wondering if this is a cheap head gasket or potentially when this head gasket was replaced, which I do believe it was replaced because this engine has been out at some point and head gasket just seems likely to me. Um, maybe it wasn't torqued in the correct sequence or something and it kind of squished this fire ring down because uh, I don't really see anything. I mean, there's a lot left over, left over gasket on the block side for sure. These might be coolant passages. Yeah, these are coolant passages as well. So that begs up another question. Are those holes supposed to be that small? But I'm pretty sure. Anyway, definitely number six is our problem. Um, obviously, I still have another. I'm going to tear apart this entire block because I'm, I'm just curious. I want to see what kind of condition it is in. I bought a brand new OEM Toyota short block, so I'm not all that concerned with the short block. However, if this block is salvageable, um, I would want to rebuild it just for the channel and then potentially do some type of giveaway um, for the short block. So, you know, stay tuned for that. I, I haven't made a decision because I need to get this block inspected because um, I don't want to give away a, a trash block, you know what I'm saying? But the, the whole reason I had bought the new one to begin with was because I wanted to give this one, rebuild it, um, probably not with OEM because it's very expensive to go OEM, but I could do upgraded rods and pistons and give it away in some kind of like membership program. I don't know yet. I haven't worked out those details. I don't even know if this block is good. Either way, I'm doing a giveaway at 1,000 subs. So if you want to get to that point and be entered into the giveaway, help me out. Help me get to 1,000 subs so I can give back to this community, which I'll go back on camera for this portion. All right, guys. So I'm going to try to stand under my light here so you guys can see me a little bit. So. As you can see, you can see cylinder six was definitely our problem when it comes to the head gasket. Um, I want to say it's just due to a botched head gasket job or potentially maybe a cheap head gasket. Maybe they didn't use OEM for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to continue looking at it and investigating and let you guys know. But that's going to do it for tonight, guys, because I'm out of daylight. We're going to take apart this bottom end just to check it out and see what's up. But if you like this video and you want to see this build completed, which I'm sure most of you do, I would hope most of you do if you're watching to this point, um, be sure to like, hit the subscribe button, uh, share this video with your friends, leave me some comments in the comment section. And also, if you check out the description, I've got a couple links uh, if you want to you know, donate to this project, if you want to donate to Motor Mouse Garage and continue to like or continue to watch videos like this. Obviously, this stuff is not cheap. It's very expensive for all you 80 series owners. You know the pain. So 
Um, totally not obligated to do so. The only thing I would like you guys to do, subscribe, like, comment, and share my videos and check out my other videos because the more you watch, the more I put into this channel and I, I'm not really too concerned about donations. Totally up to you if you want to, but just thought I would throw it out there. Anyway, with that being said, next video, I think I'm gonna break this down into two videos and I'm gonna tear apart the bottom end next video. And yeah, so we're gonna go from there. I almost forgot, I didn't show you guys the bottom of the head yet. How could I forget? How could I leave you guys on a cliffhanger like that? All right guys, weird angle, I know. So I'm gonna show you guys the bottom of the head. This is just gonna basically tell us what we already knew, but at first glance, now I haven't like checked for flatness or anything like that, but it seems to me that this head it's in fairly good condition. Once I clean it up, I'm gonna look for cracks and everything. Um, all the other cylinders look good except for cylinder number six, which looks very gunky. Uh, you can actually see a little bit where that head gasket failed. So it looks like the pretty much the whole circumference of this was leaking <laughs> coolant in here, so it's pretty bad. But this is what the underside of the head looks like. Doesn't look as bad as I expected. Of course, I need to check it for cracks. Uh, and I'm just gonna take it to the machine shop. They're gonna do a pressure test and everything like that. So I'm going to hopefully slowly lower this guy back down. There we go. That's what the underside of the head looks like. And with that being said, guys, peace out. I already said my admin stuff. And see you guys next time for taking apart this bottom end, because I'm just curious, I want to see what 245,000 miles looks like. Uh, I'm going to get this head to, the, the, to Mike and Sons Machine Shop here in El Paso, Texas. Um, like I said, absolute best guys for the job. And that's going to be it. Peace out, guys. See you in the next video.